Hello, this is Graham Brown from Escape the Cubicle. If you like these audio shorts, then go and check out escapethecubiclebook.com where you can get a weekly update of this book, Escape the Cubicle, that I'm publishing. What I'm doing is I'm writing this book and publishing it, publishing the audio, publishing weekly blog posts. You sign up to my newsletter, you can get that every week and take part in this process, this journey that's called writing a book. Today, I want to talk about success, particularly how do you measure success in what you do in business? How do you know if you're doing the right thing? How do you know what to do more of, especially when it comes down to marketing? And marketing is nine-tenths of business success. And I believe the mark of a successful lifestyle business is one that makes a difference in people's lives. And I talked about this before when I've mentioned and referenced books like The $100 Startup by Chris Gillibo. He talks about usefulness in people's lives and he uses the term value to measure usefulness. So the more value you can create in people's lives, the more freedom you can have as a lifestyle business. So there's a direct correlation between value and freedom. So the more usefulness you are to people in their lives, the more difference that you make in their lives, the more freedom that you can have as a business. So how do you actually measure that? Because there are no readily available metrics to measure how you make a difference. So the best way of doing this is to ask this question, you know, what would happen if you stopped making a difference in people's lives? So it's the same reason why people miss rock stars and they don't miss politicians. They miss brands like Southwest Airlines. But can you say the same about United? And people will miss Starbucks more than they will miss McDonald's. And the reason is that people buy on emotion and justify with logic. Let me explain. You know, people buy Starbucks coffee and they buy McDonald's coffee, but Starbucks sells its coffee for twice as much as McDonald's coffee. Why is that? Well, the reason is because Starbucks is missable. You know, I think here in Japan, as an example, if Starbucks were to disappear, were to disappear all those digital nomads would lose their place of work. All those young mums who bring in their babies during a midweek session would miss a place to hang out with their friends and talk about life. You know, and all those students who take English language lessons, where would they go? Starbucks is his default. So if Starbucks were to disappear, it would be missed by all those people and more. It's difficult to say the same as McDonald's, with McDonald's. So, you know, miss, being missable is more than just a, a touchy-feely type thing for your business. It has distinct business benefits. You know, you can charge more because, you know, when you're not missable, you just become a commodity. And when you're a commodity, it's all about price. And you also get noticed and remembered. And this is really important in the attention economy. You know, the average American grows up today seeing 170,000 marketing messages by our 17th birthday. What makes yours any different? You know, if your message is not missable, you're just one of the 170,000. You're just a piece of the noise. But Starbucks is missable. And that's why Starbucks is the most shared brand on Instagram. You can't say the same about McDonald's. And then get this, you know, when people email you back, they read your newsletter or they watch your video or read your blog post and they email you and say something like that really struck a chord with me. Or people come up to you at an event and then they, they effuse about the things that they've been doing and how you did something that made a change in their lives. That's missable. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. That's why we're here. That's what we work for. So how about you? How about your work? Let's talk about how to become more missable. Here's four ideas to become more, five ideas to become more missable. One, stand for something when you're here and appreciate the hat tip to Seth Godin for that. And a good example of this is Apple computers. Apple didn't just stand for selling computers. It wasn't the McDonald's of the computer world. Apple's stood for the individual and creativity. You just look at their 1984 commercial, which is all themed about 1984 Big Brother, whether that Big Brother was IBM or one of the big IT manufacturers at the time. 
But there's so many brands like this. Starbucks is one. Brewdog is another example, a great example. They don't just sell beer, they sell the whole experience about local economies, grassroots activism, and that personal touch. And as the authors of Brewdog say themselves in the book Business for Punks, or I think it's Business Punks, they say, don't start a business, start a revolution. Two, sell the benefit of the benefit. This is advertising speak now. You know, a mobile phone, the benefit of having a mobile phone is well known. It keeps you in touch with people, etc. You can read the news. But what's the benefit of the benefit? Well, what's the benefit of keeping in touch with people? You can, you can avoid missing out. Nobody likes missing out. You can share your life with people like I do on Instagram. And you can creep your ex-girlfriends. Right, good things, bad things, whatever. But it's all possible. That's the benefit of the benefit. Three, be more human. That's how you can compete against the big guys and become missable. By being more human, more vulnerable, more honest. You know, marketing isn't a strategy. It's who you are. The experience that you create is your brand. Forget about logos business cards, all that kind of stuff. That's old school. What you should be focusing on is the human experience and the customer service that you provide and the story that you're telling and the vulnerability that you create that people can connect to you with. Four, trade likes for loves. You know, there's a big problem with being liked. Our whole social media world is geared towards being liked. But I'd rather have a 100 loves than a million likes. And all those likes give you this illusion that you're missable, but you're not. People just click like, it doesn't mean anything. But being loved is different. Being loved is being able to move people. Whether that make people cry, make change in their lives, make people happy, make people want to share your stuff. Five, lastly idea for how you can become more missable. Find your voice. What do I mean by that? You should never edit your voice for other people. You know, you're not a politician. Be a rock star. And as I said, people miss rock stars, not politicians. Politicians have to edit their voice because they have to appeal to 51% of the market to win. However, a rock star doesn't have to edit anything. They don't need 51% of the whole music listening population to be successful. A rock star needs maybe one, two, three, four, five percent to be successful, but those 5% love them. And when that rock star goes, people cry. That's how you become missable. And the reason why they become missable is that rock star stood for something and found their voice. They didn't edit what they thought or how they lived their lives, how they looked. Look at some of the craziest rock. And people like David Bowie is an example, right? He didn't give an SH1T about how he looked. You either loved him or you hated him. And when David Bowie first appeared on pop music, Pro, music programs on TV in the 60s and 70s and parents looked at him and thought oh my god who is that big fairy on TV that was the reaction that he wanted because he knew as soon as people started saying that as soon as people started disliking what he was doing people would also love him so if you don't have any haters you're doing something wrong so, that's how you measure success. Ask yourself, will people miss me when I'm gone? My name's Graham Brown. You've been listening to Escape the Cubicle. As I said, if you like these audios, go and check out escapethecubiclebook.com and go and sign up to my newsletter and get these weekly insights, fresh content sent to your inbox. I'll see you there.